Greetings, I'm Madhya Jwala from the Basel Practitioners Private Limited. In this short video, I would like to give you a high-level understanding of data governance and its use cases. Data governance is generally mistaken to be the means of managing, improving, monitoring, maintaining, and protecting data. To some extent, that is what we want to achieve while implementation. But what exactly is data governance? Well, it helps define policies and procedures for maintaining data security and compliance. It is key to understand that governance is part of the overall management of data. In other words, data governance enforces the policies and procedures to manage the data lifecycle, whereas data management executes these pieces of information, which is then used for decision making. Without going too deep into data management, some of its key elements are data pipelines, which help transfer data from one source system to another, data warehouse, which help in consolidating all data sources for better data analysis, data architecture for managing the structure of the data flow, and data governance, as I've already mentioned previously, helps define policies and procedures to maintain data security and compliance. With that in mind, let's now try to understand why data governance is so important for banks. You see, banks offer a wide range of products and services. Banks also need to provide customers seamless interactions across their products and services. So without strong data foundation, banks will face the challenges in making effective and efficient decisions for business expansion and offering better services. Depending on how effective the data is managed and analyzed, can provide banks with a better insight into their services, the types of transactions their customers make, and their customers themselves. For example, a bank may be planning on expanding within a region. To do so, the bank would need to see what potential market it should expand or customers it needs to address. So without proper filtration and protection of data, financial institutions won't be able to differentiate between sensitive data that require higher levels of protection and unnecessary data. In fact, some banks lack the insight of their customer sensitive data and financial data, which increases the risk of their data to be compromised. Banks need to understand that good data is critical to create a customer centric bank. Before going over the different components of data governance, let's first understand at a high level the steps banks need to take in managing data and how it is linked to BCPS 239. Banks need to address four phases of the data management lifecycle, collection, management, protection, and delivery. First, banks need to collect the data, segregate it, and store it wherever required. Then they need to manage the data by understanding who owns the data, how it is used, and who is accountable for maintaining it. These responsibilities must be documented to maintain proper data management. Then they need to protect the data by identifying and documenting where the data is stored, classifying data based on sensitivity, and defining the steps that need to take place in case of a data breach. Finally, they need to deliver the data to users or extract it from the systems and convert it into information banks can use to make decisions. BCBS 239 is the set of best practices banks need to follow for better risk data aggregation capabilities and reporting practices. With that, let us now see some of the different components of data governance and how they play a role in data management. Glossary management serves as a centralized knowledge that defines the usage of the same word in different lines of business. For example, within a bank, some may refer loan amount as outstanding balance or exposure at default. Critical data elements are basically the classification whether the data is a high or a low risk value. For example, a customer's SSN is a high risk data value. DQ checks are validation checks based on the data range, data length, null value, blank value, duplicity, and custom checks. Data recon is the grouping of data of similar nature, where target data is compared against source data to ensure that data has transferred correctly. Reconciliation is done across multiple reports. For example, data in the MI reports can be compared with the data in reg reports or public disclosures. When it comes to adjustment framework, there will always be circumstances where banks need to adjust the data through an auditable manner. There are three cases to this. The first case is when data is missing in the SOR. The second case is when data points are missing in the application landing area. And the third is a completely wrong data entry. 
For these issues, we need to adjust the data through a maker checker process. Controls focus on observing and reporting on how processes work. For example, if there's a data quality issue, we need to entail a process that ensures the accuracy, credibility, and completeness of data. Key control indicators are used to help monitor the levels of control relative to the desired tolerance. If we understand the issue management lifecycle, first the issue data need to be identified. Then we need to check whether we need to accept the risk or remediate the issue. If we are remediating, then we need to track, validate, and close the issue. This can be done using tools like Jira and Confluence. That's where I would like to conclude today's video. I hope I gave you a high level understanding about data governance. In the upcoming videos, I will explain each one of the components in more detail. If you have any questions, please visit our Q&A portal on our website. Otherwise, be sure to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.